Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. In the, in the previous session, I deployed uh, my application uh, in Elastic Container Service. And uh, what happened was uh, we had uh, two containers and to access that containers, we had to use two different public IP addresses. So that would not be ideal for real life uh, uh, case, right? We want a, a common uh, address uh, where the user can access. The second thing was, since the containers are very short lived, they can die uh, and when they die and the new container is uh, started, that will have completely different uh, IP address and so we really can't access our application uh, based on that IP address uh, uh, of the containers so we need to fix this so as a solution we can uh, employ a load balancer so there are uh, different types of load balancer uh, but we are looking at application load balancer okay so in this video I will uh, sh uh, show you guys how to uh, set up application load balancer uh, uh, for our applications. What happens here is after, after we set up application load balancer, it will uh, distribute the traffic coming from public among multiple uh, containers, among multiple tasks. What happens is the tasks can die a container can die and new container will uh, start but it will register the new IP addresses so that it always track the IP addresses and route traffic among healthy targets not only that when we enable health check uh, on application load balancer it can detect unhealthy target or non responding targets based on our health check uh, criterion and then uh, it will enable to start uh, uh, new containers so uh, in many ways application load balancer is a very uh, very useful um, a device uh, and that's what I'm going to show you guys so first thing first uh, we need to uh, set up environment here because I'm going to use AWS command line to create an application load balancer okay uh, before we uh, create uh, our application load balancer we need to have some information so we need to know about we need to create security group for our application load balancer because just like EC2 instance EC2 instance we need to put um, we need to have a security group uh, that goes before uh, load balancer. We also need to know uh, some information about our VPC uh, and then we can uh, build from there. Okay, so first thing first, let's grab the information we need. So, first thing I need is information about the VPC. Okay, so this is the command that I, we, I, I use to get the VPC ID. Well, everybody can use this. AWS EC2 uh, describe VPCs and query uh, in a query section there can be multiple VPCs so but I have only one VPC so I just can put zero here dot all I need is VPC VPC ID and I want that information uh, as a text. Okay, that's my BBC ID. What I do is now is I will just copy this and Control Shift C, copy that, and then um, uh, and assign a variable. So I will say BBC ID equal to paste it. So we have a VPC ID here that we can use later. 
let me echo this variable bpc id we have bpc id beautiful so what is the second thing we need we need a security group a security group that um, we place in front of application load balancer all right so let's create security group so since our load balancer is a public facing internet facing uh, um, uh, device let's say uh, it needs to it, re it it receives traffic from everywhere so as well as it will be listening on port 80 that's why we need to open port 80 uh, uh, and allow connection uh, traffic from every IP address IPv4 let's do that so let's create first group AWS EC2 create security group and of course group has a name so I want to give it a name for example uh, application load balancer ALB dash security group and I want to I need to give it a description of course that's very important allow um, all traffic on port 80 that's it when I hit enter it will create that security group uh, okay oh oops since i don't have any default vpc i need to mention uh the vpc right so which we just did i'm sorry i need to say vpc id and we just um we point it to our vpc id beautiful uh my bad uh I need to give a space here I'm sorry VPC ID all right so now we have a VPC sorry security group created so it's a good time for me to store that information that's a security group ID so what I do is I will say group ID and I will also mention this is for ALB so ALB equal to this because I'm gonna need this in future that's why I want to store like this now we have a security group I think that's all we need so far now we are ready and go ahead and build our application load balancer but this building application load balancer uh, is not 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 straight uh, straight what do I mean by that so it has components we need to build component by components so first we build target group after that we build a load balancer and the type of load balancer would be application load balancer and then finally we build we create listener and we need to associate that listener with application load balancer and uh, and we need to forward the traffic from that listener to our target group okay so first thing first we need to create target group so what is target group target group is an entity in AWS so which is basically a group of uh, instances okay it could be and we can target uh, the entity by IP address or by um, instance ID or by lambda or by uh, load balancer itself so this time we we are going to create a target type that uh, uses IP address uh, is a target type okay so let's do that let's create target group AWS so uh, elastic load balancer ELB 
version 2 we're creating a target group okay the first question uh, I can just hit tab and I get all the information uh, but I would like to think logically so what will construct target group let's think like a programmer let's think like I let's think like the AWS developer who build this so what will construct target group I so surely when we have our instances running they run in BPC or inside BPC so we must mention the BPC ID so that that target group will be subset or inside that BPC right so I will use BPC ID and we which we have BPC ID second thing now it's inside our BPC and target group so basically target group is nothing for example in our case it is our what is the target target is our app running as a container so our app has few things it has IP address right and uh, it has the port on which it's listening and it has a language or protocol that it understand so yeah just like that like for example my app when it runs as a container and when you want to hit the traffic to this container the language it understand is HTTP so I need to say here protocol would be HTTP and it listens on port 8000 which we did so port 8000 what else so one thing here is but when we are targeting let's say when we when we access our container uh, simply we say http colon slash slash and what the ip address isn't it so we are actually targeting at the IP so this will be target type IP okay so target type is IP and we have now the IP and the port and the protocol what else do we need to uh, to construct our target group um, we we might need to do this is I think this is the main backbone but essence beside this we also do health check thing because um, health check is a very important um, component that enables uh, starting new instance or containers if the health check fails so this target group has this health check component so let's enable that health check health check enabled so health check is enabled now so how does uh, uh, how is health check performed basically health check is performed uh, by making a request at a certain uh, url right so uh, we need to provide the health check url right health check path health check path so when i say this slash means at the root URL um, uh, our request will be made and we will wait for the we we'll wait for the response back from the target so but when we do health check what protocol do we, we use obviously uh, health check protocol health check uh, protocol with HTTP right and is there any traffic uh, port that on which we do health check so health check port I guess health check port so it will be same as traffic port so I simply can say traffic port beautiful so now we have a language we have a port and we have the path but how do we define the, the target is healthy not healthy basically what we do is we make a request and we wait for the response what response do do we wait 
and so that we can say compare okay when you get this response a status code actually then we say healthy so we need to mention okay if the target responds back with status code 200 that target is responding and that's healthy then we can mark it as healthy okay so this will be a matcher so matcher uh, this the code we will be expecting will be 200 in my case so I will say HTTP code equal to 200 now let's say we got the response back with HTTP code 200 but but can we just say uh, we got the we got the response back can we mark it as healthy it's a better to try for three times and if it if it gives me healthy 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 for three times then I can say I can say it's healthy right so there is something like that so it will be healthy threshold count so we can put any number here the three was just my example but I will go with three okay now let's think the opposite way what if the status code uh, received was not 200 was different was something then that will be unhealthy right but can we just say but there should be a number of times that it should uh, receive the same uh, uh, unhealthy status so we need to mention that uh, so it will be unhealthy threshold count that's a three that's beautiful okay so this is so far acting on one target but it also need to perform health check on every target so it's like switching between back and forth between targets so we need to mention how long it should uh, uh, what's the what's the interval between uh, health check perform on uh, two consecutive targets that we need to mention so we can do that by health check health check intervals in second so I will put that 15 seconds so in every 15 second it will switch to another target <coughs> okay so what else now we have to find what is healthy what is unhealthy but one thing we are missing yes we will be waiting for the response right from the target but how long to wait it can be forever right sometimes they don't respond back then we just can keep waiting so we need to mention wait for like three seconds and then if it doesn't respond back in three seconds target is simply unhealthy right we also need to mention that so um, health sorry health health check timeout in seconds that's right that will be just wait for five seconds which is meant that the request is uh, made at the root URL in our case and it wait for five seconds before and if it doesn't get any response in five seconds that target is considered unhealthy but this has to go for like three times to be considered unhealthy okay so we have all the health check parameters done here and finally I believe we have all the components we need for our target but we want to give it a name so I will give it uh, my target and I'm gonna hit enter ah look like there is uh, some syntax it should be capital H so I will go and change that Now I will hit enter. Looks like of course it did work. Now all I need to know is here uh, target group ARN because I need to refer to this later. So I will copy this control shift and save this information. So it will be Target 
target group yeah run equal to this hit enter perform awesome okay good now we have our target ready do you want to see in the console okay let's look at in the console how does it look like so it is usually under ec2 and go to target groups and there is it my target and the port it's listening on 8000 the protocol target type ip and if i just go inside so the targets the register target we don't do it here because when we deploy our container our tax has a service uh, this uh, fill this will be automatically filled yes so this uh, the, this uh, field of register targets will be automatically uh, populated uh, once we deploy our um, um, uh, tax as a service okay so it looks good and few things here we can check health check so this is the health check path and the port is a traffic port and healthy threshold a three consecutive health check success and the timeout is a five seconds and on healthy threshold just like we said three and the success code is 200 that's beautiful so now we can go and build our load balancer right now we don't have load balancer uh, it's a load balancer we will create that load balancer uh, but before we uh, create load balancer let's check the security group that we created we created ALB security group which is here and we can select it and inspect so ah oh, man <laughs> we created group but it doesn't have any rules so so without <laughs> outbound rule is by default but inbound we need to create so let's do that as well as create load balancer okay let's create that security uh, give the rules inbound rules ingress so I we have that security group ID here uh, security sorry it was as a, a group ID ALB which we have I'm gonna use this so AWS is to to uh, uh, AC2 authorize um, security group ingress so which uh, group we are targeting right now group ID and we will say group ID ALB just a moment guys okay uh, so we have group ID and so that's the security group we are going to authorize this ingress the first of all we want to allow uh, which protocol right we need to mention protocol will be TCP and which port are you opening because our containers are listening on a port ah oh, sorry my bad this is for load balancer right so port will be 
product will be TCP, port will be AT, and source CIDR will be from anywhere. Zero dot zero dot zero dot zero slash zero. Beautiful. So the security group is created. You can go and check just to confirm. It's there. Beautiful. Now what do we need to create? Second thing we need to create is um, load balancer, right? Let's create load balancer. AWS EC2 Oh, sorry. AWS Elastic Load Balancer version 2 create load balancer okay again we need to think like a programmer who, who actually build this uh, component so what are the construct would we need to uh, build a load balancer so we already have created target group right so this is about load balancer so basically this is a component that is public uh, internet facing component and it will receive the traffic internet wide uh, it receives HTTP traffic and it need to listen that traffic uh, and then it needs to use certain mechanism like round robin method to distribute traffic among the targets in our target group but the target group is inside PPC so we need to tell which uh, subnets uh, we need to provide at least two subnets to do that and we also need to attach security group before it so let's do that I will cancel that out just to see the security group ID Okay, we have group. Yeah, that's what I need. Let's go ahead and start build this load balancer. AWS ELB V2 create load balancer. So what do we need? We need to put, we need to say, it is going to be a balancing. What type of balancer is it? We need to say scheme. So scheme will be app, which is mainly, which is for HTTP traffic. And second thing is, since it's a public facing, uh, it, listens on a port so we need to mention which port sorry protocol mm. scheme and sorry and we need to provide the subnets which i actually forgot so even before we do that we need to get the subnet id so let's quickly write a query that get that that list the subnet id 
is it to describe subnets query and this will be subnets and there can be multiple subnets so asterisk represents all subnets and we want to retrieve the subnet id subnet id as well as availability zone right availability zone hit enter yeah we have subnet id and that and respective availability zone that's beautiful so now we are ready to create the load balancer aws el b b2 create load balancer okay the first thing we need is what kind of a scheme right the scheme will be app and we need to say um, so is there a port there is no port IP address type yeah there is IP address type so this is the IP address type that the subnet will be using which is IPv4 I don't think it's necessary to mention but I will mention it and then subnets so we have two subnets this one and this one two subnets and the security group right so we know the security group is this i will copy that and paste here and what else do we need uh, we have security group do we need ppc id uh so load balancer since we already have mentioned subnets which is already inside the bbc we then need to mention bbc id here uh what else something is missing we have security group we have the subnets that will receive the traffic from it IP address type and a scheme. So okay, I will just hit tab. See what do I get? Okay. Uh, we already have covered type subnets. Um, okay. Finally, one thing I need is name. I need to give it a name, right? Yeah so i will give it a name um my load balancer hit enter uh, oh sorry oh sorry the scheme is internet facing not app that's terrible mistake the scheme is <laughs> internet facing and yeah type is type is app that's where i meant to do it hit enter type oh my goodness it's application not app <laughs> okay let's go into that app lic application hit enter so 
socknet id what where did i do that oh that's a mistake oh sorry my bad this is a subnet id i copied the wrong thing extremely sorry so subnets one subnet is this and uh, second one subnet id and paste here now it should be all right good now all i need is load balancer aaron to associate with my listener i will copy that and i will initiate assign it to a new variable lb arn equal to this hit enter so let's go ahead and check if we have actually created this um load balancer hit refresh yeah it's been created it's under the state of provisioning and we can see we have our network mapping uh, security group is attached yeah and listeners we don't have listeners we need to create listeners okay let's go ahead and create listeners okay AWS in elastic load balancer version 2 create listener that's the final piece and what do we need we need to associate this listener with our load balancer so basically application sorry load balancer Aaron which is dollar load balancer Aaron a r n what else do we need the listener of course it listen right so which on which language does it listen that's where it comes protocol uh, which is http language and on which port it listens it's like which year <laughs> it listens on a port 80 and it has a ip address type now yeah. so it listens on a protocol http port 80 and what does it does default actions so this is where we say Deeper actions type equal to forward and we need to provide load balancer ARN <sighs> sorry target ARN target group ARN equal to dollar target group Aaron is that all let me check what else do we need uh, that's all we have protocol HTTP port 80 and we have default actions and we have provided the resource number of load balancer yeah it should be all right hit enter 
it's been created it's been created okay pretty cool let's go and check yeah it's been created now this is the time we are done with uh, building application load balancer that's great now we need to create no sorry create cluster right so i will create a cluster i believe i already have a cluster created so what i do is let's go there elastic container service i have a cluster here uh, so i would use this cluster and in the previous video we already have uh, have defined the tax definition tax definition is here so we we will use this tax definition uh, to create a tax now let's go ahead and deploy uh, tax in a cluster but this time instead of having uh, we will be configuring uh, using load balancing okay create so select launch type is already selected service type families app and give it a service name i will give it app simple right now the desired tax is one we'll start with one right yeah and the networking select the bbc subnet is already selected and the security group alb security group no my security group that's the security group and this is where we need to select load balancing option this is very important if we miss it here we cannot do it again we need to redeploy select the type which is application load balancer and we already have created load balancer so just need to select the existing one mm -hmm. and health check grace period so this is a time amount of time in seconds that uh, uh, that that the health check that we have configured in load balancer will not be done because it's a grace period for not to do health check let's set uh, 40 second for the health check spread and container to load balance is our app which is listing our port 8000 and we have our listener i will be selecting listener from here and we have our target group <coughs> my target all good and create It takes a while. Let me refresh this. And screen attacks. So it's right now it's provisioning that container. Activating. Okay, now what I really want to show you guys is we will access this container, this tax uh, from the public IP address of this tax itself first and then from load balancer. 
then we will change our security group so that we don't access to our tasks from the public IP address, but only through our load balancer. Okay, let me do that. I'm going to grab the public IP address. This is the public IP address and I will paste here and port 800. We can see now we uh, we access we accessed accessed our app. That's good. Now let's access it via load balancer. So go to <coughs> load balancer. There's a DNS name. All I have to do is type this DNS name. Hit enter. That's beautiful. But one thing is not good. When we have a load balancer, we want our app to be only accessible via load balancer so let's so let's change the security group so i will use i will do that manually go to security group i need to change the application load balancer security group sorry now the security group for that is placed before service so this one i will edit inbound rule and add so so what you want to do is basically all traffic <coughs> from custom from security group with alb that's all we need. We can delete that one and save. Okay, beautiful. Now let's go ahead and try <coughs> what we did before. So I will go to my tags. Now uh, open my tags. Get the public IP address. What do you think? Now, can we access our uh, tags from here, from this public IP address? No, not possible. Because all traffic to our app, our container, our tags, can only go via application load balancer. So let me hit refresh here, it's working. Right now, this is this has only one container. Now, what I'm what I'm going to do is let's act like this container is not healthy, so it crashed or it died something, and then health check will fail. So we can simulate that by just stopping it. And what happens is. Now let's go back to our target groups. And select the target. Now we can see if you refresh it here, we have a new target register. And if I hit this, it should be It's provisioning. So target group, because it does, it does that check in every, I don't know how long did I set here, I'll check, every 15 second. <coughs> it's not happening. It's not registering. It will register soon. Yeah, it's draining now. 
and it will automatically register new target as you can see here it registering new target that's wonderful and it's healthy marked as healthy which is after three consecutive health check right Okay, beautiful. Now, the IP address is definitely changed of the tax, and but still, we can access our app from here. Now, IP address is changed. You can see that. Now, let's do one thing. Let's update our service. We can instead of running one tax let's run two tax and update so go to tax you see it's provisioning and spending soon it will be activating and <laughs> running and if you look at our target group that will be registered here as well we can see two target is registered here automatically and if I hit here because it's using round robin it we will see two different IP address this one another one we can see and they seems to be from different subnet so application load balancer really enhance um, the scalability uh, of our application because because of application load balancer we can deploy as many as tags and all that tags will receive traffic so application load balance is really good is makes our application highly available uh, highly scalable so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. So this is the end of this ser this series. But soon I will be um, uh, coming up with videos where I will go deep dive into Elastic Container Service. Thank you guys. See ya.